So we're celebrating International Women's Day and who better to talk to to celebrate women's sport than Natasha Jonas. Good to see you, Natasha. How are you doing? I'm good, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I've had a good week. You've had a good, well, you've had a good couple of weeks, haven't you? I mean, how, how are you feeling? How are you reflecting on becoming world champion in your fight against Chris Namus? It was such a special moment for you. Yeah, it definitely was. I was, I'm just, I, more than anything, I just feel relieved. You know, when you're chasing something for that long and that hard and, you know, you've been so close twice, you just wonder, is it ever going to happen? And, you know, it finally did. And now I, I feel like, you know what, I've done it now. So I've lifted the, the, uh, the weight that I put on myself off my shoulders and I'll get back to enjoying my boxing again. That's interesting you say the weight that you put on yourself because before the fight, we were obviously, the, all the talk was around that you were stepping up it was a huge jump in weight, wasn't it, for you to contest the world title, your third time of asking. Is it you that puts the pressure all on yourself or did you feel it externally as well? More me, but you do, you know, you, you're kind of, you're, you're the home fighter and you're kind of expected to win. You know, you, you want to win for Joe, I want to win for the baby. And it's mo mostly me. It's mostly me that I put, like, put it on because, like I say, you, I, I, I felt that I deserved it. I felt that I'd worked hard enough. I didn't feel that she was a better boxer than me. So it was all a case of just getting it right on the night. And because it was, I guess, the third time of asking that you won the world title, twice previously you'd gone for it against Terry Harper, Katie Taylor. Epic fights that they were, but they were both behind closed doors, weren't they? On the Calm Brook card, I mean, I was there, as you know, the atmosphere was insane. Did, did that make it even better for you, do you think? Yeah, I think it was just polar opposites. And there was always a question, I think, for definitely Joe, even though he might not say it. Um, and for me, you know, when you're, when you're performing in front of a crowd, you, want, you sometimes can be guilty of playing up to the crowd um, or letting the crowd influence how you, how you perform. And I just didn't want it, that to affect me negatively because it can do. You know, you, you hear the people, uh, boxers and, and in other sports getting stage fright and stuff and it, it can happen. And because I, I, you know, I did fight on a, on a Sky show down in London before in, in, in November, but it wasn't on the same scale. You know, you've gone from two world title challenges, like you say, in front of absolutely nobody to a sold out AO arena in front of 20,000. And you could have cut the atmosphere and with a knife, so I, I wanted to enjoy it. And Joe was saying before I went in, like, enjoy it, like, be in the moment and, and, and enjoy it. I was about to say, how, how hard is that in the moment? It's all very well, Joe Gallagher, your trainer, saying to you, do you know what, Tasha, just go in there, enjoy it, world title shot, no pressure, full stadium, massive pay-per-view. But that's not an easy thing to do, I'm sure. How difficult is that? It, it was so tough. So I decided just, just as I was walking to get on the stage before my music came on. I'm gonna stand there for, cause I've got a mix of two songs. So I'm gonna stand there for one song and I will look around, I'll enjoy it, I'll take in. And then when my actual, you know, Girls Run The World kicks in, I'm just gonna concentrate and I'm gonna be in the zone. And, and I think that's what I did. And everyone was saying, I've never seen you so focused. I've never seen you so like determined and all this. And I think, I think so I think, I do think that it helped me cause I, you do have to switch off. You can't be enjoying it all the time when you, when you you know, getting punched when you're in the ring. What was the reaction like when you came home? Because I think you went back to Liverpool, didn't you, from Manchester that night to see your daughter and, and your family. What was the reception that you were greeted to? Oh, it was just, I think everyone, you, you, your family is the, the, the people who go through, go through everything with you. Um, they see the side of boxing that no one else sees. So, you know, everyone sees, oh yeah, it's great and the times you have and, you know, you're getting to live your dream, and, but also they see, you know, you're crying after the Olympics, you, you know, heartbreak after Harper and, you know, the heartbreak after Taylor. So they see the ugly sides of the sport and, you know, for them, they, they live it with you. It was just, I think they was relieved that, like, finally, and they was proud, of, obviously, as well. But um, the, the encounter with my daughter, I, I expected, you know, in my head, I thought it was going to be a little bit more dramatic in Hollywood than it was. Uh, I thought, you know, she'd run to me, I'd run to her. Proper Hollywood, like, moment, and it, it, it wasn't quite like that. It was a nice moment. Um, she got to hold the belt, but it wasn't, it wasn't what I thought it would be in my mind.
And as in your nan, I think I asked you, I said, how many times have you watched Battle of the Fight? And you were like, forget me, my nan's watched it like a hundred times. She's the biggest fan. Oh, she's got it saved uh, on a, a Sky Plus and literally anyone new that comes in, even if they're not new, anyone that comes in the house, you know, you have to sit through the mandatory, this is Tasha winning moment. And like, she'll be watching something and put it on in the advert or, you know, if she, my mum, my mum was, my mum lives with me now, and she point blank said, like, no more, I'm not watching it anymore. So every time my mum goes out the room to like make her a cup of tea, or you know, goes upstairs to get a bath, when she comes down, my nan will be trying to get it off quick. I love that. You, you said about how you know your your family go through the highs, the lows, every part of training, and being a mum and so heavily involved in the sport, training for a world title, you know, three times training for a world title. It's, it's very time consuming, isn't it? How, how do you juggle mum life, training, and everything else around it? How, how hard is that and how do you do it? Do you know what, it, it, it can be tough. Um, and again, it's probably the expectations of what you put on yourself of how you view and society views that, you know, being a mother should be and everything it entails that sometimes you feel like you're not doing what you should do. But when I speak to my other friends who are also working mums, like they suffer with the same struggles. They don't feel that they have enough time. They don't feel like, you know, they're doing everything right. And I suppose now I feel a bit more at ease that, you know, it's, it's never going to be perfect. There is no perfect and, you know, um, Yes, my job's a bit different, but I'm still in the same boat as, as most working mums. Um, I think, you know, between the difference between the two, um, well, the, the, between the three world titles is that in the Harper camp, we had just gone into a national lockdown and, you know, 24 hours a day, she came with me to the gym, to wherever I was going, on the runs, you know, home, food, eat, back to another training session. So she's never been like involved so heavily in a camp as she did for that camp. Um, I was, she'd be giving me water in between rounds. Joe would give her a job for that day in the gym. We had to bubble with just me here, Joe, because we didn't want to make the bubble further and increase the risk of, of catching anything and not being able to fight. So our bubble was only small and, you know, she always knew what mum does and, and you know, mum goes to the gym to work, but she never actually knew what I did when I got there. And now I think she appreciates that. Oh, she'll say, oh, mum, who's the, who was in the gym today? And she knows who's there. She, know what, she knows what I do. And she's and like, yeah, she, she really enjoyed it for the simple fact, one, she wasn't in school, but two, you know, she was counting people's reps. She was giving me water in between rounds. She was, I was sprinting after her down the track. So she feels like she had a big influence in that camp, which she did. Should we tell him Jay what to do next? Or, or we'll be seeing her in your corner, I'm sure. Go goes, who's the boss? And she says you, and she, go, she goes, well, who's the other boss? And she goes, me. <laughs> quite right. I think that's quite inspiring, though, because that was a, it was a difficult time, wasn't it, lockdown for many and, and fighters not being able to fight. But having that time with her, she's actually watching you train and that, that's actually really inspiring isn't it for her to see how hard you work and also the fitness side of things yeah i think it, i i didn't realize that until when she went back to school and and and, and doing the you know you do the parents even and, and the teachers were giving uh, you know a report back of, of what she was saying she was doing and you know and how how she was doing it and like even the school on the sat the saturday before a, when I fought, was sending me, you know, a whole message because now they, they realise what I do and, they, they, you know, the class got involved in giving me a good luck message. And it's, it's lovely to know that she, she takes it in and she, 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 she realises and she listens and, you know, we don't give credit, kids the, enough credit for how smart they actually are and she takes a lot in it from myself, from Nikita, from Lee, from everybody. So, yeah, it's nice that... She, she now knows that she's my motivation to do it well and, and, and everything that I do, I do it for myself as well, but I do it for her as well. What made you choose boxing or, or how did you get into boxing?
I didn't choose boxing at all. But I think boxing chose me. Um, I used to play football myself. I was in America on a scholarship and I got injured. I came home. I'd lost a lot of... People don't realise how social sport is. I'd lost the whole friendship group because I didn't play football anymore. I lost a lot of motivation because sport was my, my drive, really, to do anything. Um, and when it was out of my life, I just couldn't find the motivation to do anything else. I was at seven jobs, I think, in one year. Um, and when I finally... I'd, I'd gained a lot of weight when I finally thought, right, enough's enough. And I went, went to my uncle's karate gym and he's just got a bag, you know, some pads and free weights. And I used to go and train there by myself. And it, my first ever coach was Sylvia Singleton. She used to live over the road from him. And she used to kind of watch the gym. Um, and she, she used to say, wow, you're always in here by yourself training, come to the local gym. And I used to think to myself, mm, don't really fancy boxing, mm, not really my thing. And I'd like fob it off and just wouldn't go and wouldn't go. And eventually she bugged me that much. I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go just to shut it up, I'll go. And I went and that was 17 years ago. So it was probably the best decision I ever made. Did you come up against any challenges being a female going into the sport? I think, um, like I said, it, just within that story, the, the initial going, you know, I've been that little girl who's, you know, going to play footy with the lads and you're the last one picked and you're like, just because you're a girl, just because the lads don't know you, just because the, and, you know, within that year, and lads, they'll always pick their friends, but within that year of playing football with the lads outside in the street around the corner, I was getting, you know, I was the first one picked because you have to be and do better. And I think the the stereotypes and conceptions that I had about Boxing is I'm going to be going into a gym, which is not my end of the city, which is, you know, all lads. I'm a little bit older now. I'm 21 or 20 at the time. I was like, do I, do I really want to go back to being that little girl playing footy? And obviously I, I overcome that barrier and actually went. And when I first walked through the door, it was literally like that. But within, that was in the first session and um, Mick, who was taking the session went, okay, um, everyone get together, everyone partner up, because you do a bit of technique in, in the rotunda before you go on to your actual session. And that's when I thought, oh, this is this football moment, everyone's gonna go to the mates, go to their partners, and I'm gonna be left standing there. But it was Liam Smith who actually said, go ahead, I'll be your partner, because he must, he, he must have got it, you know what I mean? I was the only girl there and whatever. And from that day on, no one even cared if I was, if I was, you know, a part, their partner or not, no one cared. So that kind of broke down all them, you know, stereotypes and nervousness with, because it's a bit, it was a bit different for the lads as well. Well, you hear stories, don't you? Like Caroline Dubois, she, she said that um, when she first started, even though Daniel was, you know, he was boxing, she had to, she called herself Colin when she started. You know, she sort of pretended to be a boy. And do you, do you feel like things are changing? We've still got a bit of a way to go, but I do think you hear less of them stories now. Um, you know, when 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 I you know eventually progressed into the England team, I know the likes of Nicola Adams was like turned away from clubs. I know Amanda Coulson, you know, went to clubs that made it purposely hard so that she wouldn't come back. You know, and and you, you know, I, I was just fortunate. And I know my story, especially all, all them years ago, is very unique. Um, but I, I, I would like to think that there's less of them stories um, to tell now. I, I do think we are progressing in the right direction. And I think male coaches are more aware and open uh, and accepting of, of fit, uh, training with females, whether that's for you know health and fitness or whether that's to compete. Women ha are more open to having boxing included in a health and fitness regime as well. Exactly, it's a huge part, isn't it? Health and fitness at the moment, even just going to like a boxer size class or what have you and hitting a bag, it's a great way of, to keep fit. And I think a lot of people are cutting onto that, but that is also, you know, that's gotta be down to just how buzzing, how hot women's boxing is right now. I mean, even the amount of time I've been involved with it, which is a fraction compared to you, it has gone from strength to strength. Do, do you feel like it, it's really go, going places now? And also, 
how proud are you, I guess, to be, to be part of it and a, and a huge figure in it? I don't think you'd ever see yourself as like, oh, you know, I'm the trailblazer. You are though. No one ever sees it when you're in, when you're living it and you're in the moment. You just feel like you, you just want to get it to get better. And I think, you know, we, we as athletes always knew how good it was. We just needed the world to see it. And, you know, we had the Olympics, which was a major catalyst for even young people getting involved in the sport. But now we have, you know, whole media outlets that, that, are for, um, that are supporting it. We have big promoters that, you know, are supporting it and getting behind and have female athletes within part of their stable. You have um, big time uh, coaches and, and well-established coaches that, you know, want, want is a big thing, want female athletes, but also are supporting the female athletes no different to the men, which is, you know, instrumental in making our, in making our sports grow. It's also having the platform, isn't it, to showcase the women's side of the, women's side of the sport. You know, we're now seeing women headline shows, aren't we? We're seeing more than one fight, two, three fights on a card. That seems to be moving in the right direction as well, don't you think? Yeah, like 100%. Like I said before, big, big production companies, big media outlet. It's all positive. We are going in the right direction, but we still have a, a, long, a long way to go. What do you think needs to improve? I mean, there's the constant talk about we, we, we want to get to where there's parity in the sport whether how far that off is off we, d we don't know but what needs to be done to try and achieve that to get that sort of equal pay be on the same same sort of level do we need to see three minute rounds introduced is that something that you think you'd like to see introduced to be honest it, it doesn't bother me either way like i think i think people like I think people say that they want three minute rounds because the thing that female boxing is missing is knockout. Okay, but the reality of that is if you keep seeing women at this, like, because um, we're, especially in this country, we're in our infancy of this, in the infancy of this sport where, you know, it's a growing sport, people are behind it, people support it. But I, I think if people actually start seeing women being knocked out every single fight, I don't think it would, I don't think the reality of that will, will attract people to women's boxing. Do you think that could possibly turn people off? I do. Um, I think, you know, there is the thing about, okay, if we, if we box more, if we box for longer and do the three minutes, are we going to get paid more? I still think that's a big question. And I think that people forget that what makes it so exciting is the fact that the two minutes you have to, you've only got two minutes. So it is a lot quicker, it is a lot faster, and you, you've, got to, you've got to win the round within two minutes, so it's exciting. So I think the thought of three minutes is better, but the actual reality of it, I do think would change, would change um, it as it is, which I don't think people would, would be attracted to. Saying that, Whatever the rules are is, is what I follow. So if, if, if they change it to three minutes tomorrow, I'll do three minutes. I actually do three minutes when I'm training. And that, that seems to be the, the, the general consensus, doesn't it, amongst the women, is that they're happy to do it. Like if they're presented with three minute rounds, they'll do it because like you just said, in training, you guys train for three minutes anyway. Yeah, we, we do the three minutes anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference to me. So what, what else can be done, Tasha? I think big shows, big promotions, all positively going forward, I think encouraging from grassroots up because there's a there's a bigger stereotype about females in, in boxing and from the grassroots we need to grow the sport. I think we need to get some of the best females. Obviously we do every Olympics, but that's gonna take time. So, you know, from the grassroots up we just need to, to grow it and, and you know uh, need to be supported by platforms, um, need to be supported by promoters and like I say. Um, more influence from 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 coaches and and respect from all because <laughs> we we do we do hear some negative comments from some high profile people within the sport and I think you know once that once we eliminate that you know that well we can move forward. But does that bother you? Kind of knowing who you are, I imagine that makes you even more determined to sort of prove them wrong. I just think 
I'm the type of person that won't, if you say I can't do it or say that I won't do it, that I'm 100% going to prove you wrong that I can. So, but, you know, there is some people who don't, who that will affect negatively, which, you know, everybody doesn't think like me. So, you know, we, we need support of everybody. And, and let's, let's get this straight. We are, I think, 51 or 52% of the population as women. Um, but we're, we're only, I think, 20 odd percent of the boxing population. So this can't be just a female movement. We need males to support us within the sport, outside of the sport, to, to, to become that, that fairer ground that, that we're looking for. The amount of times as well in, in um, sort of the post-fight analysis that, I mean, so many of the women's fights have been absolutely incredible. And, you know, I often say it's just time to call it boxing. We shouldn't really be differentiating between male and female boxing. Don't you, don't you agree with that? What do you think? Yeah, 100%. I, I think, like, we've, I think there isn't a, a, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but there isn't a, a fight of the year now that hasn't got a female fight in it. And that, again, they're them little steps of, of showing how, how much it's progressing and how at its best. There is no difference. So, so why create a difference? Why, why differentiate? Let's just keep it what it is. And I think for me, as an athlete, that's the great thing that the Rotunda did, that the uh, GB Boxing did, and now that Joe does. I, I am no different. Okay, me rerunning speeds with Joe are a little slightly tweaked for, for, the, for, for the things that I do. But apart from that, I am just the boxer. And I come in and I do every, every single thing that the lads do, I do. And that 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 has that has benefited me, for, like I say, from the rotunda upwards. Because even at the rotunda, I was I was just no different. You said earlier one of the key things to, to grow the sport is starting at the grassroots level and you're sort of encouraging women, children, young girls to get involved in the sport. What would you say to them to try and encourage them to get involved in this incredible sport? Just have a go, like you. I think people think oh, you go boxing, you're going to spar on your first day. That's not how it, that that's not how it works. You know, go because even the endorphins that you get from just going and participating in a session. Like I said, people don't realise how social sport is, the social aspect, and getting out and doing something and trying something new. Go and have a go. What is the worst that could happen? You don't like it, you don't have to go back. But you could be like me, 17 years time, sitting here saying it was the best decision you ever made. And also, you're a world champion as well. I think also the um, the community you get from a boxing gym as well, how beneficial that is. And also the mental health benefits as well from the fitness side of things, being around people, being a team. That's surely got to benefit people. Yeah, we, 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 everyone knows what the, the, the physio, physiological effects are of doing any type of activity. But like you said, we've got the, you know, the mental asset. It's a good de-stressor. It's a, you know... You, you're, you're around people, you're being supported. You, you know, there's not a time in our gym, in, I'm talking specifically about the Rotunda here, that, you know, I've gone in and, and maybe I haven't been working at the time. I tell you, there's someone in that gym that'll give me a job. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, it's it, the whole, it's, it's not just, you know, you ask an employer, what do you want from, what would, what would your perfect employee be? They'd be dedicated. They'd be motivated. They can work by themselves or part of a team. They'd be committed. They'd be punctual. They'd be on time. And these are all the things that, that boxing instills in you. So it's not just the, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm good at the skill of boxing, but it's all them life skills that you're learning as well. Definitely. So um, the big question, what's next for you? I was in Ben's here at the weekend. <laughs> I'd love to have the domestic fight with Hannah Rankin. Um, I think she's made that very public herself as well. Um, I know she's got a fight coming up soon, so good luck. I hope she she hope she does well. Um, and you know, but to be honest, I don't I don't really care whatever comes next. Well, it opens a lot of doors. I think for for such a long time, especially after Harper and Katie performances, I've been a lot of risk, but I didn't have a reward. So um, not many people want to fight when when you're that person. Um, so now I've got a reward, I've got something tangible, I've got a carrot to dangle that people are more willing to take the risk. So there is a lot of opportunities that open and whatever comes, whatever, whatever is best for me, that's the, that's the one I'll take.
In a nutshell, Tasha, you're basically saying, watch this space, hey? Yeah, I'm not quite done. Even though I kept on saying when I get a world title, I'll have you done. I'm not quite done. Brilliant to talk to you, and um, we'll see you soon. Hopefully in the ring, if not, ringside as well. Cheers, thank you.